Hey, what is up guys? It's been a long time since I uploaded and also created a video about performance, benchmarking, whatever you want to call it on this channel since a lot of massive channels out there are already producing content videos similar to this one. However, today is kind of an exemption because CDPR, or as you all know, CD Projekt Red who is highly known for The Witcher 3, a very phenomenal game by the way, recently released their highly anticipated RPG shooter game, which is, as you all know, Cyberpunk 2077. Originally, I planned to work on this video and publish it on day 1 when the game was released since I already have a copy of my own. However, busy work schedule got in the way and here I am a few weeks later. However, I still managed to research a lot about this game which proves beneficial later on when I was tweaking and researching on how to improve the performance of this game. And for those of you out there who are still hesitant to buy this game, then I do hope this video will provide sufficient details to let you decide whether to buy this game at its current state or wait a couple of months, possibly years for the game to get more update. Also, just so you guys know how this video will be presented, I'll be dividing it into sections that will showcase each different setting, ranging from ultra to low setting, and each set will be divided into mini section which will showcase indoor to outdoor activities, quest scene, high vantage point, driving, and lastly is combat. So we can gather data and see how each of these settings impact the overall performance and as well as the visual fidelity of the game. Plus a bonus content, I will also show you my own recommendations game settings, some tips and tricks to run this game smoothly and at the very least show you how to achieve 60 FPS without affecting the visual fidelity too much. I am currently running on the latest Radeon driver which is the 20.12.1 as of this date. As for the game, I am currently running on patch 1.04, yes patch 1.06 and 1.05 is out however after updating I found out that the 1.04 is the most stable version that's why I am currently using it on this video, so please keep that in mind. This video will contain a few spoilers up ahead like quest scene, first few missions, etc. So don't say I didn't warn you. Also, here's a quick glance of what the devs recommend regarding specs to play this game at a decent frame rate as well as decent graphics. I will be running this game at a native resolution of 1920x1080p. This game has some serious performance issues so currently playing at 2K is not possible. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and start this performance review of Cyberpunk 2077 and yeah, enjoy folks! Here's a quick glance of what ultra setting looks like in the options menu. Everything is cranked up as high as possible excluding ray tracing and DLSS as well as AMD's Fidelity FX CAS. I'll explain more about this further down in the video because we will be using AMD's Fidelity FX later on. Starting with ultra setting, indoor activities gives you around 32 FPS lowest and around 33 FPS spike sometimes and stay at 32 FPS most of the time. Though I do notice that there are quite a few areas where FPS drops lower than 30, however most of the time it stays at 32. Next on the list is outdoor activities, which gives us around the same FPS which is 28 FPS lowest and 31 FPS highest while idle. Please keep that in mind. But once you do start doing a quest, roaming around, etc., this is where the Radeon RX 590 kind of starts to struggle, which you'll see in the next footage. By the way, if you've never played this game before, this quest is called The Ride, where you'll get the chance to meet Dexter Deshawn. And around this quest, specifically the FPS drops at 22 FPS lowest and around 29 FPS highest, which is a massive drop compared to the indoor and outdoor idle footages. Anyways, moving on to the next scene, where this time you'll meet Judy Alvarez. I chose this footage, by the way, specifically because around the eye exam test, if you point your attention to the FPS counter it's actually dropping at 20 fps lowest crazy right anyways i want you to understand that this is not the only time where this massive fps drop happens the lowest i've seen so far running this game at ultra is around 16 fps and i want you to keep that in mind next is vantage point if you're kind of wondering why I chose this footage is well because I want to test a few things here like the draw distance for example but as you can see it's actually doing quite well which is around 34 fps lowest and most of the time it stays at 35 fps. 
Next up is Driving, where I want to check how this game and the graphics card perform when moving fast where the GPU needs to render a lot of things. As you can see, some stuff are popping up like magic but I'm sure this is just because I'm running this game on a hard drive. However, FPS wise it's around 30 to 28 FPS most of the time. Now moving on to combat where stuff like particles, bullet decals, effects, so on and so forth, the FPS fluctuates a lot and it's dropping at 25 FPS lowest and around 35 FPS highest. So the overall FPS score of running this game at ultra setting is around 20 FPS lowest and around 35 FPS highest. Alright, moving on to high setting. Here's a quick glance of what it looks like in the options menu. See for yourself. Though personally, I don't think you'll notice much of a difference anyways in visual fidelity except when you compare them side by side which I'll show you later on in the video. Moving on to interactivities, at the high setting give you around 35 fps lowest and around 36 fps highest which is somewhat better compared to ultra setting. Outdoor activities wise, you'll get either a 1 to 2 FPS boost or lower FPS depending on where you are in game. As you can see here, the first footage FPS is at 36 lowest and 37 FPS highest. And if you compare it to the next footage, you'll get around 33 FPS lowest and around 35 FPS highest. Now once again, you can expect a major drop in FPS with this quest. As always, the quest called The Ride with Dexter, the FPS drops at 20 FPS lowest and 34 FPS highest. The same thing to expect as well with the quest involving Judy Alvarez BD Tuning, which drops the FPS at 23 lowest and around 36 FPS highest. Alright, let's move on to Vantage Point. In this footage, you'll get around 42 FPS which is kind of constant and sometimes it drops to 40 FPS. Next up is Driving which you'll get around 33 FPS lowest and around 37 FPS highest which is somewhat smoother compared to Ultra setting. And Combat is better as well since this game is an FPS and playing at a higher frame rate is easier when aiming and I'm getting around 37 FPS highest but still it drops at 29 fps sometimes overall the fps score of running this game at a high setting is around 20 fps lowest and 42 fps highest which is 7 fps higher compared to ultra setting moving on to medium setting once again here's a glance of what it looks like in the options menu please keep that in mind while we're testing the performance as well as the visual fidelity of the game now to indoor activities at medium setting gives us around 40 fps FPS lowest and around 41 to 42 FPS highest which is still dependent on where you are in game. In outdoor activities, watching NPC go about their daily lives gives us around 46 FPS lowest and around 48 FPS highest which is actually weird compared to indoors considering there's more to render here. But moving on to the next footage, FPS is lower which is around 36 FPS lowest and around 39 FPS highest. You probably already expected this but once again, a major drop in FPS can be expected doing this particular quest which gives us around 32 FPS lowest with the quest called The Ride and around 27 FPS lowest and 44 FPS highest with Judy's Speedy Tuning quest. Also keep in mind that some of the quests in game, there is really a lot of major FPS drops so please keep that in mind before deciding to buy this game. The next footage is the vantage point again where the FPS mostly stays at a constant 52 to 51 FPS which sometimes also drops lower than 50. Next is driving which you probably noticed or maybe not. Some areas don't have as much ambient occlusion compared to the ultra setting with lower fog details, less screen space reflection, etc. You'll get around 41 FPS lowest and 47 FPS highest. Now moving on to combat, you'll get around 39 FPS lowest and around 46 FPS highest though this is also dependent on what gun you're using, how many particle effects are going on in the game, so on and so forth. Overall, the FPS score of running this game at medium setting is around 27 FPS lowest and 42 FPS highest which is 10 FPS higher compared to high setting. 
Last but not the least, low setting. Here's a glance of what low setting looks like in the options menu. A lot of options here are turned off like the contact shadows, improved facial lighting geometry, motion blur, and more to prioritize performance over visual fidelity. Indoor activities will give you around 38 FPS lowest and around 43 FPS highest which is kind of disappointing considering a lot of options are already turned off. Next on the list is outdoor activities which gives us around 37 FPS lowest which is somewhat playable if you're not used to 60 FPS and around 43 FPS highest sometimes on some specific areas of the game. Quest scene with the lowest settings possible is also not an exemption for the major drop in FPS to happen, which spikes at 33 FPS lowest and around 44 FPS highest with Dexter Deshawn. And moving on to Judy, you'll get around 30 FPS lowest and around 44 FPS highest. Specifically, what I think is some of the quests you do in this game is not optimized at all, which is why you'll probably experience a lot of FPS drops in your playthrough. The next footage is, as you all know, the vantage point where this time around we finally hit the 60 FPS that we've been dreaming of. Ah, what a delight, right? Jumping onto the driving test, you'll get around 50 FPS lowest when it drops and around 62 FPS highest at peak. Lastly, before we move on to the side by side comparison, you'll get around 47 FPS lowest in combat, in some areas in game, and around 61 FPS highest when there's actually not a lot of things going on on the screen. Overall, the FPS score of running this game at low setting is around 30 FPS lowest and around 64 FPS highest, which is 12 FPS higher compared to medium setting. With all of that done, let's move on to the side-by-side -side comparison which will highlight the difference in visual fidelity and the overall performance of the game. Also, please keep in mind that I will not be talking in this section and all the settings that I've shown you so far are the default settings in game without any third-party modifications, tweaks, you know, to improve the performance and graphics of the game. We'll get more on that after this section, so yeah, let's begin. Mind if I ask you something right off the bank? Would you rather live in peace as Mr. Nobody, die ripe, old, and smelling slightly of urine, or go down for all times in a blaze of glory, smelling near like posies without seeing your 30th? There's this prototype tech, a biochip to be precise. Jobs to grab it. Simple. Yeah. Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm-hmm. Arasaka. Surely that's no problem. Okay, now let's set the optics and other sensory sigs. Look smack into these two screens. Pretend it's an eye exam. Get a lot of requests like this? All the time. But it's usually stuff the girls scroll at the club. I take that and do some routine porn tuning.
Lastly, I will show you my custom setting tips and tricks and some of the tweaks I found to be helpful for achieving that 60 FPS target without losing any noticeable visual fidelity downgrade. First of all, download Cyber Engine which we will be using to get some performance boost and fix some of the crashes in game. Step 1 is to download the release.zip file by clicking on it. Once downloaded, go ahead and extract it on your desired folder. In my case, I'll extract it on my desktop folder named CP2077 Performance Tweaks slash Cyber Engine. Step 3 is copy all the extracted files and paste them to your Cyberpunk 2077 installation folder. Step 4, go to Cyberpunk installation folder, go to bin, go to x64, go to plugins, cyber engine tweaks, and click on the config.json file to edit the values of the mod. Now all you gotta do for step 5 is follow and change the values you have to what I have on the screen so we can match together. But the most important values you need to change are the AVX, CPU memory pool fraction, disable async compute, GPU memory pool fraction, memory pool, and lastly is SMT. Please do keep in mind that this tweak will only work on older GPU but in this case, the RX 590 still benefits from it and the results may also vary. Next is, let's move on to in-game settings. Just follow and copy what you see on the screen. The most important setting I want you to focus on is the Cascaded Shadow Range and Cascaded Shadow Resolution. These settings have a major impact on the performance without any noticeable upgrade in the graphics whatsoever. Lastly is the Static Fidelity FXCA. Just by turning the setting on and setting it to around these values, you can get around 15 to 20 FPS boost which is a lot without any noticeable downgrade in the graphics which is kind of really insane. Here's a quick side by side comparison of the ultra setting versus custom setting which you can see for yourself the difference in terms of the performance and visual fidelity. Be the judge yourself. And that is the end of the video. Hope this video helps some of you out there to decide whether to buy this game or wait a couple of months but overall Cyberpunk 2077 is a great game if you ignore all the bugs and glitches you know personally speaking. I make these types of videos alone from script writing, sourcing to editing and it takes a lot of effort so please forgive me if I can't upload content like this on a daily basis. I'm a one man team after all. Leaving a like helps a lot in terms of YouTube algorithm recommending this video and while you're at it consider subscribing i upload contents like this only when i feel like it's needed or a lot of you request for it anyway happy 2021 and i'll see you guys around if you like the video then don't forget to drop a like and also subscribe to my channel and turn on your bell notification icon to not miss any future videos and also guys follow me on my twitter instagram and please also follow me on my discord so we guys can hang out that's pretty much about it i'll see you next time